Hello, everyone. I'm Nehal Mehta uh, from Rainbow Secure, and I like to welcome you to join our today session. And uh, we have wonderful guests today who talk about uh, cybersecurity, social media, uh, and also about some founders who help you to do mentoring. And uh, also, uh, they talk about how they help you with uh, cybersecurity solutions. So instead of taking so much long time, I'd like to invite Eva to introduce our first guest, Saman Fatima. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Hello, Saman. OK, so let's get started. So Saman Fatima is a data engineer at Macquarie Group with four plus years of comprehensive experience in software development and cybersecurity. Trained in identity and access management, she has always been a cybersecurity enthusiast and is an active member of a lot of cyber communities, such as co-lead for the Lean In Circle Breaking Barriers, Women in um, Cybersecurity, committee member at OWASP WIA, Women in AppSec, instructor at Cyber Preserve Community, member at Women in Cybersecurity India, and CyberXR. She started her career in early 2017 with TCS on Gartner's tool, SailPoint, and entered into the world of cybersecurity ex Delhi chapter lead for InfoSec Girls and then being a part of many communities. She has come a long way to being a data, data engineer at Macquarie Group. She loves to learn and grow in cybersecurity field and has been a speaker at conferences like Techno Day 2021, the Hackers Meetup and various local and virtual meetups. I welcome Saman Fatima today to give us a brief instruction and brief presentation today. Um, welcome, Saman. Uh, you can get started now. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Eva, for that wonderful introduction. I'm really, really happy. And hello, everyone. And I'm really thankful to Rainbow Secure uh, for hosting this uh, symposium at, uh, you know, this very prospect time of uh, Awareness Month. And uh, as Eva has talked a lot about me, I'll probably get started with my presentation on social engineering. And since this is the Awareness Month, I think this is the best time for everyone to actually understand what is actually social engineering? How can you be more aware about all these attacks and how can you actually save your private data, your personal data, everything, and it should not be exposed or compromised to anybody in public. So I'll quickly share my presentation and get started. Okay, Eva, if you can confirm, uh, you can see my slides. Yeah, someone, it's visible. Okay, thanks so much. So, hi everyone. As I mentioned, I'll be talking about social engineering today. So, there's a lot of things that go into your day to day life from logging in to accessing a lot of different level of portals and everything, be it at your full time jobs or maybe you are just covering a lot of uh, data you're just exposing a lot of your passwords username credentials other data like your profile picture your uh, your profile data anything that goes out in the public can be used by anybody and one should be very much aware of what he or she is actually exposing and to what levels that exposure is being done so we'll be learning more about social engineering and what and why it goes behind uh, the credentials and everything. We'll learn that. So before that, as Eva has already mentioned a brief introduction about me, I work as a data engineer. I was a DevOps engineer, but it's just been a quarter that I have been, I have changed my roles and working more with data and have been closely related with data and know what are the different sources of data. And as we know, there's a huge volume of data being generated every day. So that they need to be, you know, secured as well in a way. So these are a few of the communities that I'm part of. And one thing that I wanted to explain tell about myself that I explore a lot and cybersecurity has always been a very, very uh, passionate area for me. And I try to evolve more and more into this uh, by being at major levels and learning more about all these things. So moving forward, as you can see today, nowadays, we are so much dwelled in a lot of things, a lot of things 
like social media platforms like other ott platforms where we actually mentioning our credentials our username our password be it you know uh, posting a picture on instagram or you know sharing some professional uh, um, accomplishment on linkedin or you're tweeting some major incident or you're sharing pictures on facebook or you are using snapchat or anything your emails and everything you do not know where actually your data can land up to and you do not know who is actually secretly spying or seeing your data uh, be it you are connected to your home wi-fi or you are connected to the public wi-fi you are uploading things on the drive or you are putting things on the dropbox on the cloud these are a lot of things which i guess everybody can relate to and uh, you know a lot of thing comes into account when you you know use a lot of apps where you are chatting with a lot of strangers as well you do not know who is actually using your data and that is why i regard this entire system as the hype machine and this actually can you know uh, be revealing a lot of your information in a lot of ways and on a lot of platforms so just for starters uh, these are few of the snapshots a few of the emails or messages which people tend to see on a very daily basis half of us are very much aware about all these emails and they know what is the next step when you see such an email but a major section of the society is still not aware of how they have to deal with such kind of emails when you get certain things where you're not at all involved into it is something you should actually trigger yourself and look back and check is it like is it like the correct medium that i'm getting this email why is it me that i get iphone or lottery emails or you know give away winner i become every time there's something there's some kind of your email address your data is getting exposed somewhere that you get certain kind of rigorous emails stating uh the subjects like congratulations you got an iphone click on this link and you will win a trip to maldives or stuff these are few things which you get without working for all these things and you get these prizes so this is what we're talking about these things when you see in your daily lives how can you be more vigilant more aware and how can you overcome all these things you just have to delete these emails or you have to just push them into the trash do not see them again so what is actually social engineering social engineering is nothing but it just tricks you on the basis of psychology it just manipulates you to reveal certain kinds of information be it through your emails through your social media through your telephone calls or by physical means you do not know how the other person is strategizing to get information from you and why is pretty simple you have certain kind of critical data that the person is in need of and that is why they let you fall into those tactics tactics they strategize it in some ways that uh, you can actually uh, reveal a lot of your data and they can take advantage and your data gets compromised at a larger level and how as i mentioned is through psychological means so you know handling uh, human behaviors to tricking you in certain time zones certain time uh, areas and that is why you just give away your sensitive information to the person you do not tend to so moving ahead when i was explaining what is social engineering i came across two very terms two very big terms that play a very very major role when it comes to social engineering social engineering has the base of these two things that is human behaviors and natural tendencies this is the entire psychological act that the person plays against you and makes you fall into the trap so your behavior your psychology of taking things for example i am a big time shopper holic and if you send me certain emails of discounts or you know free stuff or sale emails i can easily get uh, you know uh, driven i will be very much driven at all those emails but these are specific situations where actually human behaviors are taken into account 
people actually track you on all these things to get your data at such bigger events and then there is a natural tendency every human has a natural tendency to react to specific things that is why this particular cycle comes in act that when you feel you act then you think so this is the entire cycle that goes into picture but there are certain situation where one person has a certain tendency like for example i mentioned if somebody or myself uh, is a shopaholic person and if i see sale items sale emails messages anything of uh, that sort i react in a specific way so that's the natural tendency one reacts on specific situation so these two things go in hand in hand for social engineering attack if you have these things tackled for a person you're good to go and crack any kind of details through any means you are uh, trying to so this is a short life cycle of social engineering so first of all is you gather the information you collect all sort of information from the target user in any way possible and you just keep that source data available so that when later you are developing your uh, talk you are developing your relationship with that user in any ways like maybe you're connecting that user through digital mediums or through physical mediums so you need certain kind of information that the person trusts you and then you develop a relationship with the target like for example somebody wants to attack uh, me and they want to get certain uh, critical data that I hold. So what they'll do is if they're connecting with me through either of the means through digital or physical, if it's physical, they, there can be scenarios where people are actually, you know, uh, shoulder surfing or, uh, you know, uh, they're tailgating at my office or there are certain physical places uh, where certain accesses are not allowed, but they somehow gather those information and come after those critical information or it can be through digital mediums that they're sending me emails uh you know hiding malwares beside those uh, links that they provide me uh, through in the form of scarewares or anything and i click on it and i just lose all my information so these are certain kind of information that the person has to gather of the target and then the relationship is developed then the next stage comes off is the exploitation where uh, you are actually whatever you have collected whatever relationship you have developed now you're actually breaking down into the target system so you get that level of information and that relationship is developed and you just break down into the information and the last stage is the execution stage where uh, you know actually once your data gets revealed or you are caught in some ways that your data is with somebody else then you identify you just check back through what mediums was my data taken and then the execution takes place of utilizing these you know uh, whatever processes has to come into action and you get your data back in whatever way is possible or at least create a bar that whatever data has been gone through uh, rest of it doesn't get affected or anything at what level your um, identification was done. So that's the life cycle in a gist where you gather information, you develop relationship, you exploit the target system, and then the major execution comes into picture. Okay. I'm really sorry. Um, just give me a second, I'll reshare my slides. Any problem, Simon? Uh, no, it was okay. all good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have come across the life cycle of social engineering, and now we'll come across the very common social engineering techniques that the 
person actually uses against us in what ways they are actually taking our data and they are letting us compromise our data there can be many such ways so we'll be going after one by one to all the things that are mentioned on the screen so there you can see is tailgating there's wishing there's pretexting baiting phishing being the very very common social engineering technique and in phishing uh, it's it's like the sisters and brothers of phishing that is wishing smsing spear phishing they're all just belongs to the same family you know they're all the bad people and they just come from the same family wherever you see ishing it's all that coming down from the same family of phishing wishing spear phishing then we have quid pro quo we have dumpster diving so we'll move ahead with every uh, technique that is mentioned here and we learn more about them so moving ahead okay so first we'll talk about a lot of phishing things as you can see on the screen so i had showed you a couple of snippets in the very starting where you see a lot of emails in the form of lotteries congratulations or anything of that sort so let's just give you one solid example of a phishing email so just to clarify these attacks happen over email that email looks like it is legitimate but it's not there are a lot of other hidden urls there which seems that they are coming down from a trusted source but they are not like for an example if i quote like you get your salary receipts every month on a third party software okay but one fine day you receive your salary receipt on your email which had which has actually never happened like you are working for your organization for the past 10 years and you have been getting your receipts from the third party software itself when you manually download it 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 doesn't comes on its own so one fine day you just switch on your laptop and see there's a email from the hr and they're stating that attached is your salary slip for the month and there's an extra payment that we have added as like a quarterly pay gift and that is if you just give out your details in the below link that particular amount will be credited to your account any person would get excited yeah that's that's an extra amount that i'm getting along with my uh, salary uh, amount so anybody can easily click on those links they would think yeah it's coming from the hr yes okay the source id is at the rate my company name and everything looks fine yeah this girl who has sent it uh, is also working in my organization everything look, looks legitimate everything and then you click on that link you lose your credentials you enter your username password give a lot of checks 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 and you're all done you close your system you leave from your seat but there were few things that you have missed actually when you again look back at that email address you will see that your company name is misspelled in some other ways but because of those email body you actually got tricked and you actually clicked on that link so there could be things which you have to look across on that email like the email address at times it happens if your company name is xyz.com the email ends with xyz.com at times they just put xzy or it's like xyzz and in a hurry people actually miss to notice those domain names or those credent uh, sorry those email ids and stuff like that and they just click on the links at times uh, you also see the subject being very wrongly written there are a lot of spelling mistakes also if your third party software is on a website called abc.com they will put down the link of abc.com only but there will be certain spelling mistakes or certain extra or less characters there they will try to replicate the exact website as well so that you get tricked into clicking on it so these are few examples uh, if you want you can check back into your email if you see certain things of that sort because nowadays we get a lot of such kind of emails so you can check it also every organization is also hosting quarterly or monthly phishing campaign emails where you actually get to see those phishing emails and you pass it every month a lot of 
you watching me right now hearing me right now can actually relate to all these things so it's very important because organizations data is very important for them if you click on certain links you can lose it the next one is wishing wishing is very common a lot of you have seen advertisements when you know people impersonate somebody else and they ask for your credit card numbers your cvv numbers and they just you know get those payments actually redirected into their accounts so they take a lot of information over phone it's just they're tricking you over phone and they gather a lot of personal and financial information about you to use against you and it's just a you know seconds that your entire account is you know empty so you get a lot of calls over phone as well so at times people impersonate as a banker or as somebody from your organization or a police uh, officer anybody they can impersonate and they try to you know uh, trick you to get those information so try to check all these information who is calling you why he or she is calling you have you actually reached back to these sources to actually call back you and help you with certain things if not just disconnect the call and block the numbers that's the best way possible where you can stop phishing attacks against you and the last one for the phishing one is the spear phishing it's very much relatable to phishing attacks phishing attacks are done on a larger audience but spear phishing are only done to specific individuals who have a lot of critical information under them they are being tricked and the best example here is a lot of times c level employees of an organizations are attacked because they hold the largest level of information for their organization so they are being tailored and tricked in certain ways that they uh, reveal a lot of information about their organization next we come to pretexting pretexting actually involves a lot of lies it's like you are not at all talking in a very trustworthy manner there are a lot of lies being spread by the person who is actually wanting to gain access on your privileged data so uh, the the attackers can actually reach back to you in forms that they are calling from certain organization and uh, you know they just create a loop of lies and they just want to trick you to get those information like for example um, you would have reached out to some companies for certain level of help and you know some people in the middle they just call you up they impersonate that they're calling from that particular organization and they take a lot of information you think you are sending those information to the company but actually you're sending it to somebody else who is actually impersonating herself or himself so that's pretexting tailgating or piggybacking is very common nowadays in every organization like just if we think back Uh, a year and a half before when we used to go to offices physically then there were certain areas where one was not allowed to okay like for example i am sitting here this is my desk area but i cannot go to the server room i need certain level of accesses that i can enter into the uh, server room so for that my card has to hold certain kind of uh, access so those were only granted to specific people so that is why it's always said you cannot tailgate if one is uh, punching his or her card the second person cannot move inside with that particular person they have to wait for the doors to close and then have to punch it so that it gets logs log that that particular person has entered at this time and nobody is taking somebody with them that's highly highly unethical and it's it can actually reveal a lot of company data on a very physical manner this is the way somebody can physically uh, you know take back uh, accesses take back uh, critical information from you so that's tailgating last is baiting baiting is something that as the literal meaning says you create a bait for somebody where somebody was surely trying to come and search for that particular data you put certain things in any physical device and you know that you know for example i will use this pen drive you know it i have my data into this pen drive so you will try to infect my pen drive 
and you know i will use it so i will use it and that malware will come inside my system so these attacks happen when you know that particular person will use these kinds of things and you just infect those things only next is quid pro quo quid pro quo means something for something you give something then you get something it's something it's like barter system when you give something you take something something has to be done from both the sides so at times what happens when you are attacked by somebody so if you want to get your compromised information back you need to give something in return so that can be in the form of ransom money bitcoin anything anything possible or anything else apart from that any materialistic thing or or sort of that so you are exchanging certain things like exchanging login credentials in exchange for a service anything can happen so it's like when you give something you take something so that means quid pro quo and the last one is dumpster diving at times uh, a lot of news is have come that you know people's critical information have been found inside the dust bins the trash bins of the organizations that is why the concept of shredding your information came into picture that whenever you think certain physical data has a lot of critical information and your work is done with that particular data you just shred it then and there so that nobody like at times people just crumple it and throw into the trash bins never do that never never do that because you don't know who can actually access your trash bins and take those particular sheets which you think are of no use to you but has a lot of company critical data and can be revealed to somebody else so it could be either generic accounts usernames passwords ip addresses or any other information email addresses or any location trackings or if you're working at pharmaceutical level companies the clients there could be drug formulas anything so dumpster diving is very very you know important and never any any critical information should go into trash bins or you know dumpsters because a lot of information can be revealed from there so for now we have covered a lot of techniques like the common techniques which goes into picture when a person wants to at attack you digitally or physically but we just forget it we just completely denied that fact that we are the weakest weakest link we can actually reveal a lot of data in some ways possible we can at times be the internal threats to any organization we are the insider threats so it's the human element that has to be upgraded at a level because we just started with this that the human behavior and the natural tendencies together can work uh, you know for you when somebody has to attack you if somebody knows your weaknesses that somebody knows you are doing this you are doing that you are being very socially available on social media platforms and you know they know that you use particular apps on a very daily basis they can touch base with you talk to you get those information so we regard ourselves as the weakest link because there are certain tendencies certain behaviors that one can actually note and one can take advantage and we can reveal a lot of information there at times it happens uh, you know any outsider attacking a company it sometimes the insiders as well sometimes the people working for the company behave as the weakest link for the company and a lot of critical information in those ways are revealed so these techniques work when human behaviors come into picture the psychology comes into picture and that is why the weakest link is the human factor okay now we have studied a lot about the you know techniques the weakest link what is social engineering why how everything is done but what do the hackers look for in the life cycle part also we discuss the gather information and what are some of the things that creates a benchmark for them to look for those details from the person so the first point you see here is timeliness for example you work for an organization xyz and there is a great level of uh, you know what you say an event a conference being held in your organization 
bang on that is the best time for any person to actually attack you you know they can use that time to actually get a lot of people there external internal being part of the conference and they can get a lot of data there a lot of people to trick around and take a lot of credentials take a lot of critical data so the time actually work has to work the best because you know you're somewhere aligned at a conference when people will actually come down to you through emails through phone calls for regarding those conference details you think it's legitimate but it's not you think that you are being part of that conference by clicking on the link but you are not so the time actually matters here a lot so that people you know you are just tricking them in some ways because they are aligned in some other uh, conferences next is credibility see nowadays with all these awareness session few of the lot has actually become very much aware they actually look down for the red flags they see what you're saying is correct or not so they check the credibility as well so for that for them to not note down those red flags you come down with credible information you come down to those person and behave and credibility and language goes hand in hand like for example if anybody calls me and ask me for certain details they will have to come down from credible sources like they know that uh, they are calling from the trustable third party softwares who are actually aligned with the conference they know that these are the community partners for the conference so they are calling us so you have to be very credible when you reach back to somebody plus the language here we're not talking about the programming language but we're talking majorly because every organization has a different terminology some people call their help desk as help desk some people call it as tech assist some people call it the it guys so the language differs everywhere so you have to be very very much clear of if you're calling from an xyz organization what language what they call their employees what they call their uh, it guys you have to be very crisp with those details because once you go wrong with anything it could be easily caught by anyone if somebody is actually going through those red flags so the timeliness credibility and language goes actually you know these are the three things which hackers are actually looking for and they get all these information these are the first level of information that they gather and then it's easy for them like if they seem credible if they seem legitimate you just reveal those informations and your data is lost but still you have to be very very much you know intricate with the details that they ask you for like for example if somebody from bank would ask you your cvv number you will never give it never ever whatever they ask for i know nobody you know listening to me will give the cvv number so there has to be things where where you have to actually point down those red flags and just disconnect the call or the emails whatever mediums they are using i guess today my technology is misbehaving a lot so uh, those were few things uh, that the hackers look for i'll quickly reshare my sliders again i'm really sorry for that technology glitch uh, that i'm going across with but yeah uh, no problem saman it's fair yeah. it's okay yeah. your session is really interesting and going very well thank you so much thank you okay so let me share my screen again okay okay so now we have come across what the hackers look for what are their techniques and everything then we come to the high level of impacts of these particular attacks if they happen to an organization or to a person what it can bring across what it can actually result into are the first and foremost to get your personal information to get your company's critical information you give a lot of you know financially you are actually losing a lot on that end there are loss of lot of uh, you know a lawsuit goes into picture and a lot of clients information gets revealed so there are a lot of financial losses on that end 
the loss of productivity is very much directly proportional here if there is at any time any kind of attack that comes into picture there is a halt to the major productivity of that particular organization so that goes into drain there the next is you know whatever cost you actually pay back you know it takes a lot of time for you to actually recover from that attack because the lawsuit you know the financial losses are not a very you know they're not at all in very small numbers they're very huge really humongous amounts that companies or you know people actually pay to get their personal information or critical information back and thus if there is loss of productivity there is business disruption you know and which actually is directly proportional to your reputation in the market your industry if it has ties with three clients then the fourth one will actually see that they have lost a lot of data for that particular client so your reputation goes into vain and it takes years to recover from the cost from the business disruption from the reputation the productivity everything just drains out so you know whenever you see any attack being happening anything these things actually goes behind the picture and a lot of people are affected in a lot many ways so this is the high level of impact that social engineering a small attack a small information uh, of the uh, client actually results in a lot of impacts next is how can you prevent social engineering there are a lot many ways you know what i've clubbed it down on this particular slides is are not just the 4 5 6 7 ways there are a lot of there are a lot of things which goes into picture and since you know i want to quote it technology actually refreshes every day so are these threats and so are their preventions because every day things change so you know these are few things that i have listed down that no matter in how much hurry you are never never actually click on links that you are not sure of just slow down just slow down on those requests reject them do not click on it unless you know that you have requested for help if you have not just you know uh, consider it as scam that somebody else is sending you then uh, just uh, set your spam filters on high that you do not get a lot of spams in your emails and then the last pointer is secure your device install and you know keep your health checks for your device very accurate that is something where you should actually invest upon to that your entire system should not be breached and the next thing is yes education is key i know i am sitting down here telling you a lot of things but if i have told you two things some day tomorrow a third attack a third way of attack can come into picture and you don't know how to prevent it so the human factor there goes into picture you have to be very perspective very aware with all these things because education can be taken till years but you know these attacks the ways people you cannot read a third person's mind how they'll want to take your information so you have to think before you click think before you post anything think before what you are sending to anybody so just give it a thought that if this is shared if this is clicked what can happen if i don't know this and yes keeping your softwares up to date maintaining you know uh, multiple locks there is something very very important and then we come down to the general safety if you think that you know your level of access is very less very low and you can never be attacked that's something you should never think of you can be attacked any time any level of access any level of system can be attacked so never think of no level of access is too low and uh, you know there are a lot of you know social engineering emails rules and everything been published by every organization the policies are set up in place but we all know it's just not these attacks but normal life as well under pressure people react differently if we are under pressure if somebody is robbing us that is also under pressure so you know you actually do things that you do not actually thought of that you will be doing maybe correctly maybe wrongly so under pressure those you know 15 16 level of statements never work around it's something your human factor your perception your awareness what you have learned across seen across comes into picture and your you know your psychology there plays the most so that's something you know you cannot rely on to this 15 20 pointers list that like this is the 20 pointer policy 
you will follow it you will never get attacked no this can never happen those 20 pointer playlists can you know become obsolete after two days because there will be different ways different prevention ways and next is whenever you come across certain emails certain phishing emails certain things which you come across that you think is not ethical at all please please report it i know every organization has those particular departments being set up so please be more vocal about it you have the permission to say no to things you don't always have to say yes and share that data no just be sure what you're sharing and you should understand the tactics the strategy how the misuse can actually happen where it can land you to and the last pointer which i should be putting as the first pointer is always use multi-factor authentication there should be multiple factors to authenticate you not just your passwords not just anything else but multiple ways like a lot of social media platforms actually provide now multi-factor authentication to actually authenticate you so try to be more vigilant there that wherever you see mfa please please choose it at least you will be double protected double triple protected and last uh with the conclusion point I know this is a very weird and stressful position and you know uh, what I have told you would have made you thought you know that nothing can be protected everything you know can be hacked in ways or the other it's just you have to you know understand you know what are the odd things what are things that you know uh, you should actually look down whenever you see an email or you should look down when you see and uh, see a message anything so there should be certain kind of odd things odd communication that you should be able to figure out you should actually know like if you're working at an organization how many similar domains domain names actually exist for them if it does try to not click on those similar domain names just the authentic one and you know be more aware be more inclusive in all these things and learn things that how and where and when you know you can be tracked you can be you know somebody can be spying you somebody can be seeing your data there so it's i know it's a weird and stressful situation it can bring you under pressure but these things actually go hand in hand if internet is a blessing for us you know it's a bad place for us as well where you can lose your data so just with a thought i want to say that never never become a victim for that always be vigilant be aware of what you see what you click what you post and stuff like that and last i just want to end with this quote that social engineering actually bypasses all technologies even your firewalls even you know things that you think can actually create a wall there but it doesn't so here the psychology the human factor comes into picture and you know no technology no firewalls can actually stop social engineering from entering your system from entering your critical information so here I end my uh, session on social engineering. I hope you got a brief gist of what happens, what goes around it. And if anybody wants to reach back to me, these are my handles. If you want, you can screenshot it and you can reach back to me and we can discuss more on it. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Saman. It was uh, really nice uh, and, you know, uh, the way you organized all together in one presentation all the different aspects of you know what one should be doing in the digital life you know that's very essential them at least even if somebody remembers like you know 50 percent of this 50 percent of chances of them getting hacked are reduced so it was really nice that you touch upon different aspects like you know whether it's related to online shopping or it's uh, related to what you post on social media Things happen and people sometimes do forget in, you know, even though a more, most knowledgeable person can get tricked, but yeah. the key is how to recover. So once you have thought about this aspect, then somebody may recover soon, then, you know, they realize, like, you know, everybody knows that there is a missing attack going on and people here in United States are getting calls from, say, they are calling from Amazon Prime or, you know, some other place where they are getting uh, most appointed uh, you know, missing attempts, but the key is that how to recover now. If somebody, you know, sends you some key that they are asking for you, then you should be actually at least have a habit of reviewing the text messages you are getting because those hackers would not be able to use uh, 
the same sort of codes, at least in the United States, where uh, it's coming from. So you should actually have a, you know, compare what you're getting this time versus what regularly you get as a code. You know, because hackers is trying to uh, make this fill you a sense of urgency and, you know, trying to trick you into giving everything they want. So it's very essential for both uh, IT professionals and regular users, the business users. So these all learnings uh, uh, are essential for the employees of a business, whether they are in an IT industry or they are in healthcare, they are working for some uh, law, lawyer's office or they are working uh, for big enterprises like say Boeing or even a, you know, Kellogg's or even a, some startup. Essentially, when you are in a business environment, in a work environment, your responsibility increases more because everybody is working remotely, right? So now you should be having your own habit of at least not using the work device for, uh, you know, personal use. If you at least try to follow that habit, some of the chances of, you know, getting uh, your work device impacted are at least minimalized because what uh, do you, you do in your personal life, in your personal device, at least your company, your organization is not getting impacted. So that's okay. the number one thing. Number two is that uh, when your employee is being asked to do something, you should actually always go through proper workflow. If you take, try to take shortcuts, like, you know, sometimes, uh, you, uh, you know, message outside of your corporate uh, messaging environment, say, you know, use, uh, you know, ad hoc text messaging or some other ways, then hackers may also find that very useful. Hey, by the way, this company guys, you know, don't use their company's own messaging system then they have a very good opportunity a very open playground they can trick you something and similar thing happened with twitter right the way they hacked into uh, the uh, all the obamas and clintons and all others uh, twitter accounts they had ran a social engineering attack onto the twitter support team it was not like the support team were not aware of all these uh, learnings but they tricked them into uh, you know giving them access to those uh, accounts so it's always a refresher is always very important. Whoever yeah, is I'm... listening to the webinar today, but you know, they should be also listening to it three months down the line as well. It's like periodic, you know, training reinforcements and also updated training, you know, because you are correct that, you know, today, whatever you are telling them to be safe, but something may change tomorrow. The way hackers work may change, right? Like solar winds attack. Now is correct. a new concern of a, you know, supplier chain, uh, you know, threat. So you have a new responsibility. You not only test out your applications that you are developing, but you have to now test out and verify the APIs, the plugins that you incorporate in your development process. You may think that you are developing this fancy report and this plugin is very good for me, but you have to also test out, get it reviewed by your security team. What actually this plugin is doing other than giving me this fancy reporting option? Is it something doing something else as well or what? Is it siphoning any data, sending something? So. There are tons of things to do. Look at DevSecOps level. DevSecOps yes. is very important now. Other than pen testing and testing your, you know, doing a security assessment, DevSecOps is where you be more agile, more secure at every step of the development process. Yes. Really, your, your presentation was right on point to highlight all the different aspects of digital life. And if somebody follows that and keep themselves updated, I think they'll be really safe in their work life too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saval. And just one pointer, like you mentioned, you know, solar winds and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. We now, you know, do not actually, you know, we're not actually sure that, you know, our Google assistants, our Alexa devices are actually listening to us. Even there are, you know, our toasters and everything. You do not know who is actually listening to us there. So these are few things where you come across and, you know, I have personally stopped using Alexa now. I had it a year back and now I think that she is listening to me. I don't know how, but you know, things have read across. Yeah. So I've stopped using it. Or if I'm playing uh, her, I just uh, click on the mute button that she is not listening to me. At least when she, I want to play the song or change it, I then, you know, unmute her and then actually say, but yeah, now it's like completely stopped. And on that phone devices that we use a lot of social media on our, you know, uh, professional uh, front so you know they came and uh, 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 policy of you know bring your own devices you know uh, they give you your company phones and everything where you get all the attack uh, you know alerts and everything so that is also something you know we are getting to a place at a very good place but yes we are still far from it 
we yes, are yes. still far from yeah. India. Yeah, you're right. IoT security, these IoT devices, they are very good for human convenience in their daily life, but there still remains work to be done, more work to be done to gain the customer's trust. Because yeah. uh, I have seen in our home also many times when my kids talk or do something, we talk with them. Alexa suddenly thinks that we are talking to her and you know, she just start acting on it. You know, so they clearly, you know, so kind of interpret my kids' voice as there's like an instructions and you know, so they do it. Yeah. So and, it's very uh, important. Yeah just just like a homework i want to put it across for everyone who is actually watching it has it actually happened with you that you are talking about something to your friend on messages on calls and the very next hour or minute you just see posts regarding to those things like you're talking that i have to buy one toaster and then after a few hours or minutes you just see toaster advertisements coming down across yes. you. So that's really scary scary it's really the technology yeah, is following us yeah right right i think we should be participating yeah everybody is on this platform here if they notice that they should yeah. report to us and then we can you know take it as a separate research subject i think rainbow secure will fully support that all this initiative where we are trying to make uh, the digital world secure and if we have some research that we can you know back up with some sort of evidence yeah we'll surely highlight anonymize uh, you know whoever is reporting it but we can surely take this up uh, with the given platform and ask them to make uh, tweaks, you know, just like uh, people were working uh, with uh, WhatsApp or Facebook earlier. There was like, you know, absolutely, you know, very scarce security on those platforms. Although there were options, but they were all turned off by default. So here also, if we find something, then, you know, we should at least educate our users. This is how maybe you can, you know, control your voice input settings or whatever it takes to not to be so you such ads or not to be you know more invasive in your private life i and i see one here comment from durgesh kalia on the chat yeah he's rightly said that the byod has introduced a big risk for data security yes he's uh, right on point there that the work devices has got intermingled now and you know everybody will agree that uh, they do forward or receive uh, some or other work related message on their personal device so it's more about you know it should be at least a reactive rather than you know uh, active where you click something and try to access the work systems durgesh is joining us yeah, so durgesh is yes, right. yes durgesh you can uh you can. hi hi everyone durgesh here hi. um hi uh, someone i i heard uh, your uh, presentation really on point and uh, what you talked about <clears throat> social engineering is you know on top of every other uh, uh, type of uh, vulnerability there uh, is so imp so true uh, i'm coming from the ot operational technology side uh, where we are more segregated than uh, than our it side but even there you know social engineering plays a big role in uh, breaking any controls or countermeasures so yeah i wanted to kind of say that there but um, and and you know you were also talking about um, how when we are talking to our friends and you know how those uh, things show up in our emails um, you know a lot of uh, things are being scanned your email you know, your gmail account whatever you use you know it's all all the emails are scanned um, for keywords and then that has that is used to target you with ads uh, and so is any type of uh, voice service so when you signed up for the service you actually agree to those things so you can go back and look at those terms and conditions um, a lot of it is to do with that um, so it is happening um, and everybody knows about it but not nobody is doing anything about it uh, at least as of now but eventually people will catch on and uh, stop using or restricting those services, I think that's yes. when there will be right. true impact. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. yes. Is that uh, we have to like, you know, educate the users of pros and cons of using freemium model versus, you know, subscription based model because in some of the same of same services, same platform, they sometimes offer a paid service and where they promise not to scan or not to do those things. So sometimes we have to like, you know, educate our users, at least the proprietors and founders who are using the personal account for the business work i think there's more education required on that side also i think uh, we can separately have a workshop or session or some sort of webinar where we educate users how to make best use of the data security and privacy practices on these platforms including facebook and all other platforms because there is a way actually to stop facebook from using uh, those cookies and tokens uh, that track you across mm -hmm. different websites 
so we can uh, have that at some other day but your uh, topic was very good today to at least begin the conversation highlight the importance of social engineering and uh, again uh, thank you very much for durgesh to chip in and you know uh, put his uh, best words here so i think thank uh, you thank you so thank much you so much thank you you highlighted very nicely and thank you to give us a time and share your knowledge yeah now this Thanks recording so will also be available to 700 plus uh, attendees who have registered to download the uh, session and attend the session it's because it's the work time in united states at 11 a.m yeah. but we have other attendees who are constantly emailing us to get the recording so this all will be part of our online platform where they can uh, see and watch later yeah. great great thanks thanks thank you thank you